Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, or maybe good morning. Do let us know where you're joining us from, because today I have an awesome lady who is quite local to me, but yet she is very, very dear and very close friend of mine, and I would even say a soul sister, Diana Grant, who is an author, who is a self-love coach, and also she is a speaker. My darling Diana, I'm so happy to have you back in the studio. Thank you so much for coming back to my show. Hi, Olga. Thank you so much. What a beautiful introduction. Yes, my soul sister, I agree with that. And it's so good to be here, as always. I love our conversation. <laughs> me too, me too. And self-love show, it's so important. Even though we do it only once a month, every first week of the month, I still believe we bring so much value. And how do I know? Because people reach out to me and people comment and people share this show. So I really appreciate your input into this show. And I think speaking about self-love, it's so important. And I'm so happy that today we're going to captivate and we're going to capture leaders and how and why are leaders struggling from lack of self-love. And I think this theme is so timely considering what was happening in the world in the last 18 months. You know, everybody says about COVID-19 and impact on businesses, but nobody really talks about how those leaders who are responsible for decision-making, who are responsible for running their organizations. Those leaders, even of the families, there's always yeah. leaders in the family. How well, those are affected by having lack of self-love because of everything that was happening in the world. So Diana, over to you. Tell us, please, how do you think and why do you think leaders are suffering from the lack of self-love? Oh, absolutely. Olga, you've touched on so many points. Um, first of all, definitely, just to agree with what you're saying, um, there are so many leaders at so many levels all through life, like like you mentioned, parents, peers, um, school colleagues, you know, if you're, if you're younger at school. Um, then we have global leaders, politicians. There are so many levels of leadership. And so I want to start off by just looking at my definition of self-love, being the sacred self-love coach. I've got that word sacred in there, and I'm very, very passionate about my definition of self-love. Um, and it definitely ties in with leadership. So what you find is um, a lot of people are talking about self-love all over the world. And a lot of what other people are talking about as self-love, I define as self-care, which for me is more of a, it's part of self-love. It's an important factor, but it is that it's a factor of self-love. Um, and I believe there are so many factors of self-love, but self-care in itself is not it doesn't fully encompass self-love. Self-love is a whole lot more than that. And it really comes down to deep self-knowledge and deep self-awareness. Um, and leaders are people who have so much self-knowledge and self-awareness and self-discipline in many areas. And I'm going to talk about the four main parts of each of us as human beings. And that is the physical body. So when it comes to the physical body of a leader, most leaders are pretty in tune with their physical body. They have to be. It's the it's the physicality of who they are, their vitality that carries them through. If they're not fit and healthy and strong, athletes are a great example of a physical leader. Um, but, you know, you might have a parent or a business leader who might not be at their peak vitality, at their peak fitness, but they're aware of it. They're aware of their body. They know how it works. They know themselves on that level. Most leaders will also know themselves on a mind level. I mean, you, Olga, when it comes to mindset, you're one of the gurus, I say, because you're really, really <laughs> good at that game. Um, and definitely leaders are strong of mind. They have developed um, their intellect, they've developed their ability to think, and they've developed their ability to think in a way that motivates and inspires so that they can lead both themselves and the people around them. <laughs> I love your cards. Um, <laughs> and then there's the third aspect, which is emotional. Mm. And most leaders of all levels and in all areas of life will have developed a sense of emotional intelligence or if they don't have the natural emotional ability, they would have trained themselves into emotional literacy. So they will have learned how, which emotions to harness um, in a leadership role. And so that's great. There are those three aspects of being a human being, the physical body, the mind and mindset, the mental capacity, and the emotions. 
which is great. And I believe that's where most leaders stop. Most leaders, they're good leaders and they're great and they have exceptional um, impact and and potential for more impact. But there are those three areas and there's one key area that's missing. And that that's what I call the sacred self. Um, other people call it the inner self, the soul, the higher self. And that is the, the I am part of who we are. That part of who we are is what really drives everything. So it's it's one thing to know ourselves physically, mentally and emotionally, and that is great. That takes us really, really far. However, if we are able to lead others with all of these things in place, and we don't have that deep, deep sense of self, of the part of us that drives all of those things, the part of us that is our own true essence, um, then what happens is burnout. And it'll be burnout on impact. We might stop having impact as a leader. Or it'll be burnout on, on inspiration and what to do next, where to next. So it'll, the leadership will get to a certain point and then stop. Yes. Um, so impact is affected. Direction is affected. Longevity is affected because the real core of who we are has been left out of the story. And so for me, that's where self-love comes in. Because if I'm leading people and and I am not, and I'm good in all of those areas, a big part of that is also the inner critic, that judgment voice. I've got to do better. Most leaders are driven by a, a need to serve and a desire to be of service, which is so beautiful, but it can also be their downfall if they're not truly connected with the true essence of who they are and loving that and giving themselves space to be who they really are. So, yeah, that's quite a mouthful for, <laughs> for your first I question. love that. And I love the four aspects which you mentioned because I do strongly believe that when it comes to leadership, very often leaders lead from their head, from their mind. <laughs> Right, but what you refer to the fourth aspect is that soul, is that heart, is that is it inner you, that your humanity, your your spirit within yourself, mm-hmm. and when they reconnect with that part of themselves, yeah. oh my God, mind blowing results are coming. Why? Because mm-hmm. you're at a higher level. You mm-hmm. connect everybody at a brand new level, at much higher, at such interesting level that sometimes. You don't even understand why you do certain things because you you get guided you you yeah. receive information you you receive the knowledge and sometimes you wonder where is it coming from because you connect. So that is powerful. Yeah. I'm so happy Absolutely. you mentioned that. I'm so happy. We have a couple of uh, hellos here in the group, which is really awesome. A few active people here, and we have Fabulous. couple comments here about self-love which i love i really appreciate everybody who is saying hello we actually right now are watched by narration india which is exciting we're wonderful. In Belfast. <laughs> how wonderful we are again in punjab and india too which is wonderful absolutely wonderful i love the comment from Teresa mccristy brown um she says self-love is choosing yourself even when others refuse to mm. and isn't that a great aspect of leadership Yes. Um, because what that implies is self-trust. And absolutely to um, Cherise, what happens when we love ourselves and know ourselves at that deep core level, there is trust. And so when difficult decisions need to be made, even though the whole world could be against you in that moment, it's knowing that that is the right next step and trusting that, that guidance that you were speaking about, Olga. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Because again, if we can't trust others, as a leader, you are there to delegate. As a leader, you are there to build the team. As a leader, you you are visionary and and you know where you're going, but then you have people helping you to get there. But how can you allow them to perform if you don't trust them? Yeah. But you don't trust them because you don't trust yourself. So I love what you mentioned, Diana. That's so, so powerful. She continues here. By choosing yourself, you are caring for yourself which is the important factor. It is not selfish. It means rediscovering your own power. Your yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. I knew yeah. you I mean, that, is, that is key because, again, it just ties into exactly what you're saying. So that connection with 
true essence of who we really are yes. is where our power sits. Each and every one of us is connected to source power. We are energy in motion. There's no denying that. That's science. So, you know, even for people who are not spiritual and might hear the word soul and kind of shy away from it, the fact is we're all energy in motion. We are superpowers walking around. But it's about connecting with that. It's about knowing it, cultivating it. So as Cherie says, caring for it and trusting it. Because in those moments when difficult choices need to be made, and as you mentioned, Olga, um, leading big groups of people, big or small, whether it be on a family level or a global level as a politician, um, that power and harnessing that is so vital. And then that's where the ripple effect takes place and everybody who's in your team, whether your direct team and then indirectly on a bigger scale, feels that and is able to then be led and and encouraged to do the same for themselves. So yeah, it's so key and it has such a such a vibrant ripple effect. So yeah. It is, it is. Really it's like domino effect, right? Yes, that's it. That and then you just give it to everybody else because you start with yourself. And 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 I know that we like to go back to this uh, phrase: if you don't have an apple, you can't give an apple. But this is so true. If you don't have self love within yourself as a leader, how can you impact? How can you influence? How can you make a difference in a positive way to yes. other people's lives? You can't really because you're not. Yeah, and I think the key factor there is. Uh, making a difference and then as we touched on earlier for everything has its time and has its season where it then might shift and changes need to be put in place or a new direction needs to be taken and where there isn't self-love that's where the doubt can creep in that's where the the lack of direction that what's next i don't know what to do next um and that's where the impact gets gets cut off because if in a leadership role we don't know what to do next, well, then we're not going to do anything, are we? Or we're going to do the same thing again. And when that season has shifted, something new needs to happen. So the self-love is so key for that. It really is. It really is. We have a nice hello from Suhamani. She's, she's online business success coach. So that's wonderful mm -hmm. to have coming from her. She says, this is the self-awareness part of mm -hmm. emotional intelligence. Ah, oh, beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because as I said earlier, emotional literacy can be practiced. But Absolutely. without that true self-awareness, that deep self-knowledge, it's, it's not a full, um, a fully developed emotional intelligence. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for your comments. If you have any questions, please make sure you do ask them before we finish off. This show is for half an hour only, so you have 15 minutes to ask your questions or make any comments. So we love receiving your comments and your information. It's interesting uh, what Chavisa also adds here. She's so active today. I love that. Oh. If you want to live a meaningful and healthy life, you make the decision that supports intention you then succeed in this purpose. The more self-love you have for yourself, the better prepared you are to relate to circumstances. Oh, wow, Cherise. You should write a book. <laughs> I think yeah. so. What if she did? I, I'm sure she did by now. Come on, if you didn't, you have a book now right now, girl, right? But this is so wow. hard. Mm -hmm. And how true is that? How true Absolutely. is that? Absolutely. That is so, so very powerful. That power behind the intentions. So intentions are great. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've all heard that old saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And that's so true what Cherie says, is when there is true self-love, which breeds the self-knowledge, the self-awareness, then there is that power that supports those intentions. And all the actions that come will come naturally in the right direction, in the direction of the desire, the intention. So, yeah, that's so powerful. I love that. <laughs> it's very, very powerful. So, yes, Charissa, do you let us know if you have a book, if you haven't got, when are you starting one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's one already, having a bird, having a bird right this moment. But, you know, Diana, it's really important for leaders right now to be aware of these four aspects which you mentioned, right, which is the body, which is the mind, which is the emotions and the inner self, right? But as we all know, in such a busy world, in such busy environment, when life happens, 
it can be quite challenging for them to switch off and work on all four aspects. Mm-hmm. And I do believe you can't prioritize one out of four. I do think you have to work on all four. But what would be your tips to leaders to actually look after all four aspects? Maybe not at the same time, but what they can do to make sure they maintain all four aspects of their human being at the very healthy level so they can impact and lead better. Right. Wow, that's a beautiful question. Thanks, Olga. Um, my main tip is always remains the same. My very, very main tip <laughs> is meditation. And, you know, I'm sure the world is getting tired of that word. It just comes all the time from every angle. Meditate, meditate, meditate. But really, for me, <laughs> the key to success, the, the, if there was one thing that I had to pin down, one thing, it would be meditation, is that taking that time to just get quiet. And it can be as short as five minutes. Um, I recommend 15 to 20 minutes, but in every day. Um, because that's where the connection with inner being happens. That's when we're able to hear from our intuition and from our higher guidance. Um, and that getting quiet is the most, for me, the most powerful thing out of any day. And then I think the rest kind of follows, um, as I always like to keep that one key factor, the inner self, the sacred self, you know, as, as the one that's in charge. So as soon as that's happened, as soon as that time has been given every single day to inner self, then the rest falls into place. So, um, taking care of the physical body. It's about, you know, listening to your body, getting to know your body. And that will come again as a as a response to the self-love, to the time that's spent within the self. Um, the same to be said for mindset, practicing mindset, that desire, which Sharice was mentioning earlier, the, the power behind the intention. The intention will be there to cultivate the best mindset. And there are so many ways. Working with a mindset coach like you, Olga, I mean, that's just super powerful. Um, and then, of course, there is the emotions as well. And again, like I mentioned, cultivating emotional literacy, emotional intelligence will come. And there are so many different ways. But to me, the, the keystone, the cornerstone of the foundation is time spent with inner self. And with that, the self-love factor is so important because when you're quiet and you meet yourself where you really are and who you really are, there is no possible space for anything but love. So that is where everything grows from, that that bed of love, which is deep within ourselves. And as you may or may not know, I always say all the answers you seek are within you. So that's my number one tip. Go within. Spend that quiet time. Go within. Find your answers. They're all there. I love that. You know, right now, I think you probably shocked a few people because I'm sure some of them never heard this phrase, all the answers within you. They're like, what do you mean? I usually have to my advisor. I usually go to, to, to somebody else, but actually all the answers are within you. And we, as we both are coaches, we know when we work with clients, we tell them what they should do and how they should behave and what's the next step. It's about them finding that answer within themselves. And we provide the space for yeah. them to get to their own answers. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm really hoping many people right now will hear that phrase and they will actually write it down on their notebook yeah. and will start digging deeper within themselves with the power of, as Diana said, meditation, meditation, and meditation. I hope that was clear enough. <laughs> Fabulous. But you know, we have another comment. We have more hellos, uh, people saying hello to us, which is wonderful. But we have another comment from Teresa, and I think that could be a really wonderful topic for the next time, just because I'm mindful of the time today. Mm -hmm. Teresa says this, we don't allow ourselves to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We set expectations that are often far beyond a reasonable level of achievement. We must allow ourselves to struggle learn, grow, and become self-fulfilled in our own time and space. Beautiful. My Absolutely. God. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Thanks, Cherise. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to touch on that, um, that's so key in leadership as well because, and it's what you said earlier as well, that breeds the trust. So um, 
allowing our own process, allowing ourselves, our own humanity, and really accepting ourselves on every level will breed trust within and therefore everyone that we impact, that trust will flow to them as well. Um, and as we so often do, we allow other people space. We forgive people when they make mistakes and yet we can be so hard on ourselves. And so I think it is really, really key to remember our own humanity, give ourselves space for that journey and allow it to be so often we actually end up pivoting in those moments where we accept that struggle, accept the challenge, and then suddenly we'll have a light bulb and the challenge and the struggle is over. So, yes, that is so key. Thanks, Cherie. Brilliant. <laughs> that is wonderful comment. Wonderful. And what I would like to add here that, you know, like if every person on earth is, of course, afraid of making a mistake. The other day I was with my son and we were – um, driving to school, usual um, you know school drop off time, yeah. and I love driving with loud music. I just love doing that. It it just it just makes me buzzy and kind of you know charges me for the day. And um, when we were approaching the school, he put the music down. I was like, oh, why putting the music down? He's like, oh, I don't want other students to hear that. I was like, oh. well, what they're gonna think? Mm. Wow. I thought. From little childhood, of course we had a conversation about that. Mm. From the little child, from the little age, from the little, you know, baby age, from that stage of our lives, we already are trained to remember what other people will say. What yeah. other people will say, what they will think about our behavior, right? Mm. But when we live our, let's say, average lives, right, then it's okay. But when we go to the next level of becoming a leader, mm -hmm. then it changes. Because when you live your average life and you make a mistake, that's okay. When you say something wrong, that's okay. But when as a leader, you make a mistake, then the whole nation will talk about that, right? Yeah. When you say something wrong, then the whole nation will talk about that. So yeah. question to you, Diana, is how our leaders could be bulletproof to the judgment? How they can stay strong when everybody else is judging them? Hmm. Again, oh, again, I'll go self-love <laughs> and, and self-love found in those moments within herself. So again, that when, when we give ourselves every day space to connect and to come face to face with who we really are, which is a very, very powerful harnessing of energy, we really are bundles of living energy. Coming face to face with that once a day, will in essence make us bulletproof because not everyone is always going to agree with us. And at high level leadership um, spaces, when, when one person disagrees, often it can be thousands if not millions who disagree and come against you. However, when you've made a decision, you've made a call from that space of inner knowing, and there's a very big difference between knowledge and, and information. And when it's from a space of inner knowing and trust, then even when the world is going against you, if you still trust what you've done, you're okay. And, and you're also okay if you then, a week down the line or 24 hours or even a year, change your mind on that. You'll be okay because you're taking the time, you're connecting with your own power and who you really are, and you trust every decision that you make. So, yeah. Love that. I love the part of trust. I really mm. love it. It feels like the self-love and trust are literally are just like gelled together. Mm. They come together. When you love yourself, you trust yourself. When you trust yourself, then you lead a lot better, right? Then you don't double, you don't double guess. You don't really mm. try to come up with various things and opportunities. Just trust the process. Not always there is yeah. a logic to some things, but you trust the process. Right, mm -hmm. but when we are leading from our minds, then unfortunately there is not trust and self-love. There's only yes. some other possibly insecurities are driving your decisions. Possibly mm -hmm. some feeling to revenge or feeling to pay back or something something else is is driving you in your decisions when you lead from your head. So yeah. being connected with your heart, especially that fourth aspect which you mentioned right mm -hmm. in the beginning of the show, being connected yeah. to your higher self, so you heal yourself, you trust yourself. Yeah. 
you a more impactful and bulletproof leader, which is really important. What I love here is the comment from Chandra. I wonder where he's based. Please let, him, let me know where you're located. Uh, baby does not care of falling down. They try, try, and try again. And that's how they learn to stand up. Yes. Brilliant. I love that, Chandra. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. And that, that's, that's too, if we can just expand that beautiful point into the leadership space, when there's self-love and there's, and there's that self-trust, which is a result, then when you fall down, you automatically get up because it's okay. You fell down. And so get up and try again. And often it could be hearing from your people that actually shifts you. As a leader, you could go, okay, well, you know what? That decision did not roll out as, as I thought it would. I still trust why I made it. And your feedback is great. Let's try it a different way. And it, that's what it is. It's, it's as Chandra said, it's falling down and, and trying again every time, just standing up. And that without self-love would be a very painful experience for if we were coming at it from an ego perspective. Whereas coming at it from a, a deep inner knowledge of inner self, it's okay. Just keep going. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what's interesting? When those babies, and we both have children, I know your daughter is a lot older than my son, so you are <laughs> like mommy, right? But even though they are having this big age gap between themselves, still, when they were growing up, we still remember those days when our babies were reaching out to something taller than them, yeah. holding on, and then shaking from one yeah. side to another and wobbling, and, and they had no fear. They, they yeah. are wobbling. They're so wobbly, right? They have no strength in their muscles. Yeah, their muscles, they're semi-ready. They're semi-ready to walk. And yet, they're so brave to stand up and do yeah. that first step without yeah. fear. They yeah. have no fear of failing down. They have no fear to fall down. They have none. Yeah. What they do is fall down, and they look confused. They're almost like, oh, that was a bit unexpected, right? Yeah. They don't Absolutely. Come so don't look afraid. And I haven't seen any parent, at least I wasn't parent like that, and I don't think so you have been a parent like that, or I don't think so there's any parent in the world who would look at the baby and would say, you are such a piece of failure. You will never walk. Look at you. You can't even make the first step. Right? Exactly. It happened. So why do we look at our lives as lessons? Those yeah. lessons, not so for failures, no, those are lessons. Fresh yeah. lessons which are here for us to make us grow and make our muscles stronger. Because yeah. every time baby falls, he learns how to keep his balance. A so little bit better, yeah. Also lessons. What do you think about this, Diana? Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. And and a key factor there, I think, is tapping into that, that, that analogy of the baby. So... When you see that baby, they have that inner knowing that the next thing is to walk. That, and it's, that's just what they do. And so absolutely, to, to your point, is just keep going. But, but the key factor is knowing. And when there's so much noise coming at us, <clears throat> excuse me, from the outside world as leaders, if we don't have that inner knowing, we're not going to be able to have that lack of fear and that self-trust and that taking that next step and wobbling around without fear it's going to be it's going to be rather frightening because there is so much noise from the outside so yeah absolutely be the baby it's all be babies <laughs> absolutely absolutely and what's interesting going back to the point which you were making about trust i love what uh, chandra says he, he i love how he's doing he's doing this minute taking he says i like that there is no love without trust and there's no trust without love that's yeah. very very powerful but you yeah. know Back to the baby stage, they trust they can walk. Mm. They just yes. trust, they just know that the next stage of their life is to walk. Yes. There's no doubt, mm -hmm. there's no fear of what others will think. Yeah, and I it. think, to be fair, Diana, I think it's so good that babies cannot think at that stage. Oh, I think nature yes. is so smart because if babies could think and could remember more than just one or two words by that time, they probably would remember and they will probably do the self-talk and yeah. they probably talk themselves out of walking in the life. They never get out of the crib. No. <laughs> I'm safer lying down. So I'm going to be safe out here. Yeah, exactly, right? So I think it's even empowering knowing that the 
cannot speak. And as yeah. a result, they cannot think. They cannot think mm -hmm. themselves out of walking. Oh. Yeah. So Love you either, whenever you are just about to make the next step, just connect with yourself and yes. trust your intuition. Trust yes. its fourth aspect of your human being, which is mm -hmm. the intuition, the highest self, whichever, whichever it is, you can relate to whatever it speaks to you, but trust the next mm -hmm. step that it will be a lesson. That's mm -hmm. what is important to remember. Yes, absolutely. A lesson and an opportunity to become a better version of who you were five minutes ago. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Diana, I just feel like with you on the show today, people definitely became a better version of themselves. <laughs> because there was so much value. And absolutely bravo to you for doing that amazing work, what you do. I seriously, I salute you. And what you do and how you help people around you is absolutely outstanding. Before we finish off, I would like to give the privilege to people to find out how they can get in touch with you and what you can do for them. Could you please, in a few words, just share how exactly people can get in touch with you? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Olga. Um, it's really easy to get in touch with me because everything about me is connected to my name. So my website is dianagrant.com and I'm Diana Grant on all the platforms. Um, so LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, just look for me under my name, Diana Grant. Um, and then if we can, I'm sure I'll share links later. That's no problem at all. And yeah, the, the key factor of working with me is getting in touch with that fourth aspect of who you are and seeing the amazing ripple effect that that has on every area of life. So for me, it's just about really, really getting people to connect with the true essence of who they are so that they get to be themselves in their life and through that, reap wonderful, wonderful benefits. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. And before you go, could you please tell us about your magic cards? I'm not sure if you have them with you. Oh, you. Magic <laughs> cards are amazing. I always have one in the car and I always pull them at least once a day because yeah. I know they definitely help people with their self-love and self-acceptance. Mm. Could you tell a little bit to us about them? Oh, absolutely. No problem. So these are affirmation cards. Here's what they look like. They're called Love Me Beautiful. Um, so the book that I wrote is called Love Me Beautiful. I have a program called Love Me Beautiful. And these are the cards, the affirmation cards. And it's quite a small deck of 30 cards, just with some lovely um, affirmations on them. You can see some of these here. I have what it takes. Um, let's see another one. I truly love myself. And as you said, Olga, these really, really help. You know, I also I just pull one each day and then put it up in front of me. Oh, here's a good one with, with um, response to today. I trust myself. There we go. That one popped up for me today. So, um, yeah, I pull one each day. It's just really, really fun. They're light, easy, small little box. So you can have it in your handbag, ladies, or in your car, as you said, Olga. And, yeah, they're available on my website as well. And they make a lovely gift as well, which is great. It really is. As you were talking, I was just curious, okay, what what is the message that for me today? And this is what came up. I truly love oh, it. Love that. <laughs> like, oh, it can be. Honestly, you just popped out with a trust and you just popped out this within yeah. the love. But again, it, it's a little yeah. reminder to yourself through this yeah. card and it's really nice to have it in front of you. And I think those little things like that can help you to go through the day, can help you to remind about self-love. So, Diana, do yeah. you mind, because I don't think so I have a link to these cards, um, at least right now with me, but do you mind below our video just to share the link to those cards I'll just in case people would like to get them? Is it okay? Absolutely, I'll do that. Thank you so much, yeah, I'll do that. That's wonderful. Well, we have a couple of thank yous coming through here. Thank you so much, Cherise. She says, thank you, Diana and Olga. Thank and you. thank you as well, which is wonderful. Thank you so much to you guys for being here with us. And Cherise, mm. you were outstanding today with all your comments <laughs> from other people that were texting and they were commenting, which is wonderful. If I can yeah. ask you for a little favor, would it be okay? Could you please just share this video at least once? Mm -hmm. Maybe with one person, maybe on your page, maybe somewhere else. I don't know where exactly. But by sharing this video, imagine how many more people we can inspire together. Yeah. Remember, the true power is in togetherness. And the true impact is made when we connect amongst each other. Right? So if you could share this video, that would be really wonderful. And Diana, darling, thank you so much for coming to my show. I'm so thank looking you. forward to have you back first week of August Wednesday, same time and same place. Great. Thank you so much, Olga. I look forward to see you then. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. And don't forget, love yourself. Yes. Love yourself. <laughs>